guys and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today we're talking all about woven pillow covers. So today's video is actually sponsored by Divinity Fibers and Silk Divine. Linda has two shops and she was kind enough to send us a bunch of different fibers so that we could create a really beautiful woven pillow with you. So I got a variety of different fibers. Divinity Fibers is where I get all of my merino wool and um, her sister shop has always intrigued me, so I'm really excited to try out some of these other fibers. So we'll talk quickly about the different materials I'm gonna be using, and then we'll jump right in. So we've got a number of different merino wools. So we've got the navy. I'll link all the names and um, links to the actual listings in the description below so that you can go check out these individual products as well. Um, but we have five different kinds of merino wool. And then from Silk Divine, we have absolutely gorgeous cotton. Um, I believe this is all like recycled or at least it's like sort of just this torn cotton, which really intrigued me. She has Sari Silk Ribbon. Um, these are the plain ones, but there's also all kinds of different patterns and colors as well. Um, I haven't worked with these two at all before, so I'm really excited about that. And we have a different variety of colors in those. And then she also has this chunky merino yarn. Um, and I believe this is from Silk Divine, but her sister shop, Divinity Fibers, I believe the yarn she carries in this merino um, can be color matched with the merinos in her shop, in her other shop. So. This is really exciting. Um, I worked with her to come up with this color palette. I really wanted to do something springy because it's like very wintry still in Northern Alberta and I wanted to do something that was gonna be bright and fun and kind of for spring. So I'm gonna do this kind of variegated um, effect on the pillow. So we're gonna move from the navy all the way up to these off whites. So we'll quickly talk about the other materials you're also going to need for this project. I'm gonna be using this cotton canvas. It's just like a natural cotton color. It is quite heavy. It's probably a little heavier than I need, but I like to use something thicker than like a quilting cotton with a woven pillow just because the woven pillow front is already so thick. So I kind of want to somewhat match that with the back as well. I'm gonna be using our spruce and linen um, cotton warp string. This is just the natural color. You can find this in our shop. And then I have a 20 inch zipper. 20 inch? I believe it's 20 inches. Um, for our pillow, we're going to do like a concealed zipper so that you don't actually see it. This is kind of the easiest way to get your pillow insert in. And for that pillow insert, I'm using an IKEA 20 by 20 pillow insert. I absolutely love these. They're a really great price. They're down filled so the quality is also really nice and I believe the fabric on the outside is cotton which I really enjoy because I hate it when at least in our climate it's very dry and cold and I don't want it to get staticky so that helps. So something I learned when I was an upholsterer um, we made a lot of pillow covers and pillows in general and Something that you wanna do is actually make your cover slightly smaller than your insert so that the insert really fills out the cover. And over time, your insert's going to, the filling's gonna to wanna to settle, and yes, you can re-poof it up, but it's gonna to wanna to squish and settle. So if it fits a little bit snugly in your cover, that's actually really great because then it, even when it starts compressing, it's not gonna just make your pillow cover look really big. Um, so because of that, my pillow insert is a 20 by 20. I am going to account for both shrinkage and seam allowance when I'm actually weaving. So because we want our cover to be a little bit smaller than our insert, we're working with a 20 by 20 insert. I'm going to put my warp on the loom at 21 inches wide and I will weave 21 inches. So this is going to allow me a half inch on all sides of shrinkage because it is going to shrink a little bit once you take it off the loom and then another half inch on all sides to allow for a seam allowance. I don't know to be perfectly honest if that's exactly the right shrinkage amount. I guess we'll find out a little bit more specifically um, once I have it off the loom but that's kind of what I'm going for and I think that's plenty and honestly at the end of the day if the pillow ends up a little bit even smaller than that that's okay because like I said especially with a down filled pillow insert like that's gonna squish and you're gonna be able to get it in there 
and it'll just look like a really full pillow. So yeah, let's get started with the weaving. All right, so I'm warping 86 strings onto my loom and I'm gonna get my piece of two and a half inch cardboard in there. I also used my shed stick this time. So then I did six rows of navy thick and quick yarn and then that's gonna be followed by three rows of over two under two plain weave with this navy merino half split. Then we've got split merino with sumac stitch, seven plain weave rows with this blue cotton. Then we're doing three rows over two under two with merino split in half, six rows of plain weave with the blue silk. Then we're gonna do two rows of sumac stitch and two rows of plain weave with this pink cotton. Then split merino in half sumac stitch again after that with this beautiful pink merino. After that we have eight rows of plain weave with pink silk four rows of sumac with the light pink yarn is next. Then we're gonna do eight rows of plain weave with the off-white silk. And then split the merino in half again for another sumac stitch with off-white merino. Then we've got seven rows of plain weave with the off-white cotton next. And then to finish it off, I did six rows of plain weave with the off-white yarn. Okay, you guys, so I have this off the loom now, and I'm just gonna tell you how I finished it. We've got a few videos of how to finish the back of your weaving, but I've already done that here. And then for a pillow cover, you actually don't want to sew these ends back in, so I simply did my overhead knots and then I just trimmed them short. What happens, I have found, when I sew them back in is that once you have that stitch line here, the knots start peeking through and I wasn't a huge fan of that. So for this one, I decided just to leave them out. So you probably noticed in the video that my stripes started to get thicker near the top because I realized um, I had them a little bit too narrow down here to make them perfectly even, but that's okay. I think it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The other thing that I would probably change about this is this sumac stitch is going to be a challenge to get through a sewing machine. It just is. Um, I think I can make it work, but um, if you're worried about that, you could just do another section like this where it's just this plain weave, or you could even split your wool into quarters just so it's thinner. So yeah, that's what I did with this front piece and hopefully you were able to follow along with that time lapse okay, but I will list all the materials and a link to them in the description below in the correct order. I had to add this navy wool. This is like a thick and quick um, Lion brand navy wool and then this loops and threads wool at the top. I just wanted something thinner that was gonna be mainly hidden by the seam allowance anyway, um, just so I had like a flatter surface on each end. All right, so now we're ready to start putting the back on. So I've already cut out my pieces and I've sewn the zipper to one half. So my pillow cover actually shrunk more than I accounted for, which is fine because again, especially with the downfilled pillow, it's easy enough to stuff it in there, it'll be fine. Um, so mine ended up about 19 by 19 and I was kind of expecting it to be more like 20 by 20. So I cut one piece out here, um, six inches by 19 inches. And then I sewed my zipper to that. And then I ironed it down and I'm gonna make a stitch line along here just to hold this really nice and flat. The next piece I cut is 17 inches by 19 inches and then I ironed it and folded it back up two inches. So this is where we're gonna get our concealed zipper. So let's move this aside for a minute. So basically these two pieces are gonna go together like this. So this one is going to sit on top of here so that the zipper is hidden underneath. There'll be no stitch line on this outside piece either. So I'm gonna quickly explain to you the stitch lines I'm gonna go make, and then I will show you them when they're done as well. So like I said, the first one you're gonna make is sewing your zipper to your 
thin piece and then flip it back up. I ironed this and then I'm gonna just do a top stitch along here. With this piece, I after you iron it up two inches, I'm going to sew my zipper, the other half of my zipper, along here. So I'm gonna take this flap and I'm gonna sew my zipper like this. So we have right side of the fabric down, right side of the fabric down, zipper to this. And then once I'm done that, I'm gonna open up the zipper because you don't want your zipper to come off. I'm gonna open up the zipper and I'm going to sew this little two inch section that I have just so it all stays together. And I'm gonna do that over here as well sewing right over top the zipper and then cutting that excess zipper off. That's where you need your zipper to be in the middle so the zipper head is still there. So I'm gonna quickly go do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I did all those steps I told you to do. So I have, just to show you the back side, I have sewn my zipper to the flapped piece and then underneath here I did that top stitch with the zipper there and I did the sewing along these two sides to hold everything in place, cut the excess zipper off. And now this is what the back of our pillow will look like so that the zipper is completely underneath this little flap. It just makes for a bit of a tidier look. I just really like that way, the way that looks. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna quickly tell you to do before you sew your two pieces together, don't be like me, um, you need to sew your zipper down on this flap otherwise it just wants to open right back up when you put your insert in so before you sew your two pieces together do a quick stitch sewing this zipper down to your flap so now the last step which is probably going to be the one other than the weaving that takes the longest is we're going to take this is the right side of this fabric and the right side of this and you're gonna just pin this all together. You really, really want to pin this part. And then just sew all along the edges. If you like, you can do more than one stitch, um, just for safety's sake. I'm going to have an interesting time <laughs> going along these parts, but I'm gonna go do that, and then it's time to put the pillow insert in. Okay, so I have my pillow all sewn up. I've got it with the pillow insert inside and I love this. I think the only thing I would change is if I did this again, I would probably not do this big thick sumac stitch simply because um, that was really hard to sew together. <laughs> uh, I think I would just stick with more of this plain weave with the wool just to kind of flatten it out. I mean, it is a pillow. It doesn't need a ton of texture. I love the way this turned out, but it would make your life a lot easier sewing if instead of the sumac, you just did the over two under two again with the wool roving. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I'll show you the back as well. So we've got our concealed zipper, which I think looks really nice. It gives it a clean look hides that zipper and it still allows you to change out the pillow insert. That's why I like putting zippers in my covers because this by no means is a washable pillow cover. Like this would be very much spot clean only, but I do like the idea that you could take out the insert and use it in a different pillow or if you wanted to put a fresh one in, um, that's always an option. So. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you'll go give Silk Divine and Divinity Fibers some love. Um, thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Silk Divine and Divinity Fibers. Um, this was a lot of fun. It was so much fun working with these different materials. So the ones that I hadn't worked with before was the cotton, the silk, and this thicker yarn. I've worked with stuff like it, but not this in particular. Um, so that was really fun to play with. I love the color, the variegated color effect and um, it just gets me really excited for spring. So if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, and welcome back. Ugh. Okay. And the, the pff, let's try that again. <laughs> so that's going to be, give me,
I don't like technical stuff. It makes sense in my head. It's hard to explain to you guys. <laughs> okay. Does it look pretty?